What's up guys? It's your girl Jennifer Danielle and welcome to the Jen Danielle Experience. I am putting together a series to tell you guys everything I have learned about getting deals on cruises. I know how expensive it is for solo cruises to cruise because we typically have to pay double occupancy. So uh, I have learned some tricks to help you guys to save. Now, I have not figured out how to fully avoid double occupancy, but these tricks will help you and help you to get on these cruises. So if you cannot tell from the background, I am currently on Carnival Cruise Line. Look at my little towel animal back there, y'all. I am on the Carnival Conquest and I got an unbelievable deal on this cruise. Now, I booked this cruise with my own money and I went directly through Carnival's website using some of the tactics I'm about to tell you about. So this video is going to be heavy on Carnival tips, but they're going to be tips that you can use no matter what cruise line you are looking to go on. So let's get into this video. I am excited to tell you about this. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and let's go. Now, I am a firm believer that it is important to plan ahead and stay ready so you don't have to get ready when it comes to planning cruises because ultimately you want to go on the cruise that is the experience that you want. And maybe that's a little bit more expensive than what you would have on hand when some of these deals come across. But I am somebody who procrastinates and who tends to have flexibility in my schedule as of now. And so when I see a last minute deal, I snag it. So that's what this video is mostly gonna be about. It's gonna be for those of you who are looking for last minute deals and wondering how you can stay on top of finding out when sales are happening and when sales tend to happen. So before I get into the details of how I got this cruise, let me give you guys some details on this experience and what I paid and all of that good stuff. So for this cruise, I paid $273. I will put the receipts here so that you guys can see it. That is not including the gratuities or any of the other add-ons that I had to add. So as far as things that I added, I added transportation from the port back to the airport um, at the end of the cruise. I added the steakhouse, which was a $49 experience. And I also prepaid my gratuities, which were $64. For this cruise, I did not get internet and I did not get a drink package. So any of those things are going to have to be paid for individually. And unfortunately, we're only on day two of the cruise. So I have not tallied up how many drinks I've purchased yet. So um, as of now, this is the total of what I have paid. And this is going to be the final cost once I add that information in there. All right, so now let's get into the tips because I know you want to know how you can book. You don't care about my trip. So as far as how I book this cruise, the first tip I can give you is you want to sign up for loyalty programs. Carnival's program is called the BIFP program. It is the very important fun person program. I think that's what it stands for. But you can just sign up for that via um, their website. It's free to join. And what that basically does is it tallies up points and adds you to kind of like their insider program. It's the same as if you use points at like say a gas station or if you get Starbucks points or something like that. So you want to sign up for that program because a lot of times they give you offers and it's not like the casino offers that are really, really good, but they give you offers where you will get a little bit more money off of your cruise than what you would be expected um, if you were to pay, you know, directly through carnival.com. So sign up for that program and that goes straight into point two, which is you want to sign up for the email list of the cruise lines. Signing up for those email lists is going to be the best way to find out when there are sales happening and the information that they are offering at the time. Now, I will tell you for this particular cruise that I booked, the thing that I did was I booked around the holidays. So just like every other industry, we know America is very capitalistic. And if there is a holiday, any kind of holiday, they are going to run a sale. It doesn't have to relate to travel or to anything else. I actually purchased this cruise during the Labor Day sale. And I know you're probably like, why would they put cruises on sale for Labor Day? Who knows? But it was a holiday, so they did a sale. So my next tip is be sure to think about and plan ahead of having money during those holidays because sales are going to happen. The biggest travel sales typically happen on Travel Tuesday. I'm going to do another video talking about that, but that is going to be the Tuesday following Cyber Monday. So once we have Thanksgiving, we have Black Friday, which we are all familiar with for sales. There is Cyber Monday, which is the internet version of that. And then there's Travel Tuesday, which is that following Tuesday. Every travel brand from airlines to cruises, they usually have the best sale of the year on that Tuesday. So that is going to be um, sometime towards the end of November for us um, this year. Maybe that's even crossing over into December. I think Thanksgiving is late this year, but 
Get your coins ready because those trips are going on sale that day. Okay, so now that you're signed up for the loyalty program, so you're getting the additional savings there, you know to sign up for email, so you're getting alerted first whenever there's sales upcoming, you know to look around holidays. The next thing that you want to remember is the time of year. Now, the most expensive time to travel is the summertime. It doesn't matter if you're going on, say, Virgin as an adults only cruise or wherever. It is always more expensive in the summertime because that's the time that most people plan their vacations and the time that most people go. So schools are out and things like that. So everything is more expensive in that June to I would say early August um, time frame. So I typically try to avoid those. And I always, always know that those sales and that uh, there is going to be a pretty significant price drop on cruises or anything else that I want to do starting towards the middle to end of August. So if you guys notice, I just cruised on the MSC Seashore and that was a last minute cruise for me. This Carnival Conquest one is a last minute for me. And these cruises were significantly cheaper. If you've been following my channel, I shared a couple of deals that I was able to find on um, Celebrity, on on Carnival, Royal Caribbean, every cruise line. That is the trend is that this time period of the end of August up until I would say November before you get into the holidays, that is going to be probably the most cost effective time to cruise. Now, I know you guys are probably thinking, yeah, it's cost effective because it's hurricane season, which is 100% true. Hurricane season, I think starts in June. It's like half the year. And like, I just feel like so much of the year is hurricane season that I just hope I miss it and go ahead and book my cruises. I have been very fortunate um, this season because there was actually a pretty devastating hurricane a week ago um, before this cruise. And I wanna say around my MSC cruise, there was a hurricane as well. So it is definitely happening. That is a risk that you take. Um, as far as the cruise lines, they will either cancel if a hurricane impedes or they will try to avoid it and like go out. So maybe you'll miss some of your ports and you'll have more sea days. Um, but cruises typically still operate during hurricane season and you just kind of book and hope for the best. I mean, I know it's not the best <laughs> thing that I can tell you guys the way you probably wanted to hear, but that's just what it is. And that is why I think it is so important to have travel insurance for cases like that. Um, if you guys have been watching, I actually just got stuck on my first flight where it was canceled due to weather. And so I am a huge proponent of travel insurance now for all of my trips. So get you some good travel insurance. I recommend an annual plan. I use Allianz. Um, I can tag some information below. You can reach out to me and I can actually get you a quote and get you signed up for that. But do that and go ahead and just book your cruises this time of year because the price difference is drastic. Now, I have found that the second best time to book cruises is right after the holidays. So January, when everybody's money has run out from the holidays, you've done all the giving. January up until spring break. So January until about March is you can get some good deals on cruises also. And also the Caribbean feels amazing during those times. So I am in Georgia where it gets cold, but it's not horrible. Um, but we do have like an official winter. So this could be the perfect time for you to get away, replenish for the new year and get some warm weather during the winter months. So that is the second best time to book in my opinion, to avoid the high cost, avoid as many children being on your cruises. If you're going on say like a carnival in rural Caribbean, and it can be a really good way to reset and start the year. All right, guys, so those are my top tips for booking last minute cruises. Let me know if you guys have any questions or if you have any tips to add because I'm always looking to learn also. I hope this helps you to book your next cruise and I will see you on the next video. Bye.